Drew, how you doing, sir? Good, battle. Sweet name. It, uh, thank you. It's it's my real last name, and I figured it's a whole lot cooler going on radio of battle instead of going by Tim. I don't know. Tim's pretty much just as intimidating as battle. Battle is the way, and I gotta say, this is this is an exciting time for us because on the show we finally completed the trifecta of three MB. We've had Ginger, we've had Heath, and now. We've got the new WWE champion Drew McIntyre, and I got to say, you're having one hell of a 2020 so far. So yeah, it's been it's been very interesting, that's for sure. Uh, 2020, I started off winning the Royal Rumble and earning my WWE title shot at WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar. Obviously, things changed slightly. We ended up in a pandemic. I won the WWE title off Brock Lesnar in five minutes at WrestleMania, and had the chance to lead the company through some difficult times, providing the world. And some escape and some entertainment at the height of the pandemic. Right through till now in the Thunderdome, getting a little bit closer to normalcy. I lost the WWE title, unfortunately. But this past Monday, what did I do? You got I it back. The WWE Championship. Head into Survivor Series this Sunday to face the Universal Champion Roman Reigns. So what on earth is going on in 2020? <laughs> right, and there's so much history between you two, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. But before we start talking about that big match against Roman, the one question everyone wants to know, is there any chance you bring back broken dreams, even if it's for one night? Yeah, everyone does want to know that because I hear about it on social media almost <laughs> every day. Um, I personally have visions of it coming back um, for like a special occasion. And then hopefully releasing it, kind of limited release for everybody out there to download. And um, because it is, you know, talked about all the time. It was such a popular song at the time. I personally think it's great and it's interesting that the lyrics, if you look up the book and dream lyrics online later on and check the story throughout, it kind of matches my career story, which is very interesting. It's just that it's kind of a little slow for me right now. Like I love the bagpipes, the war music. If you saw Raw this week, I came out with the kilt and a gigantic claymore stuck in the ground and a bunch of fire around me so it doesn't quite match the current Drew McIntyre but I do want to bring it back for a special occasion and I mean I gotta say that entrance that you had this past Monday night was phenomenal like I, I sat there and I just like and I have goosebumps right now talking uh, like thinking about that entrance and man that was one hell of an entrance and uh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with your entrance this Sunday at Survivor Series but kind of let's go back to, <laughs> to Hell in a Cell in your opinion what went wrong at Hell in a Cell, causing Randy to beat you for the title. I climbed up on top of the cell. That's what went wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, Randy Orton was a, a veteran of Hell in a Cell. He's won world titles inside Hell in a Cell. He's faced the Undertaker, the master of Hell in a Cell, inside Hell in a Cell. I've never been inside Hell in a Cell. He was the, the veteran. Uh, that was the third cell match of the night. Nobody had escaped the cell. Never mind climbed on top of it. Randy went up the top of the cell. He had a weapon planted up there. I just love fighting. I can't help myself. And when the heat of battle, I get carried away. And I climbed up a 20-foot cell when I hate heights. Like, I'm not even joking. I, I like hate heights with a burning passion. It's hard enough being six foot seven in my boots, looking down, never mind climbing up a 20-foot high cell. So once we were up there, that was probably my downfall. And I climbed down the side with Randy and fell off the side of the cage, which is legitimately 10 feet. I'm looking down from almost 17 feet when I fell off the side of the cell. And that table, like Jim Ross, uh, our former commentator, used to say they know how to fall. Trust me, there's nothing you can do to prepare yourself for your 270 pounds falling over 10 feet through the announce table. That was my downfall right there. When I fell off that cell, I was done for, unfortunately. And, I mean, there, like you said, there's no way that you could prepare because it's like it's either you hit or miss, and it's you're going through that table regardless. So, um but I, yeah, I it did nothing to break my fall. Nothing. Exactly. I landed, uh, bit right through my tongue. I oh. whiplash like crazy. And I thought this is the most painful thing I've ever felt in wrestling, literally through my head. Man, and that's that's a that's a scary thing. And of course, Survivor Series is this Sunday on the WWE Network. But the one thing that I, I thought was really cool, and I've told my kids to kind of m watch how you've done this, um, that you there was no motivation drop. Like you didn't go into a slump. You didn't be like, well, I'm done. Like this is it. So how did you stay ready for your Monday night rematch with Orton? And how did you maintain the focus of being, okay, I got to get this back? I was more motivated, if anything. I never get deterred, never get disheartened. 
you know, it's because of my journey and all my ups and downs um, that have kind of hardened me into the, the kind of Scottish warrior I am today. Like as soon as I lost the championship, <clears throat> I wanted my rematch with Randy Orton. He himself had two rematches. Um, the difference is I was willing to fight him two additional times. He was never going to fight me. So I would have asked for the match. Technically, I never asked for the match. Maybe he would have said, yes, yeah, sure, Drew, you can have a rematch. But, you know, based on Randy's 20-year record of being a terrible, terrible person, um, I assumed he would have said no. So I just kept attacking him, kept threatening him, and kept uh, you know, talking about how nobody's going to get the opportunity to fight Orton before Drew McIntyre because, you know, I am that obsessed with the title. I am that obsessed with being the best. And if anybody else felt like they deserved it more than me, all they had to do was challenge me, and I would have faced them and I would have proven myself as number one contender. But I was absolutely adamant to get that rematch with Randy. Thankfully, I was granted it, and I did what I knew I could do. And what I haven't done prior with four months shooting with Randy Orton was hit him with the Claymore and pin him one, two, three, right in the middle of the ring. And that's that's the rest is history. And, of course, you move on to Sunday, which is a big night for Survivor Series. And, you know, to some people, this is a, a kind of a different sh- scenario for you. you. You're kind of seen as the underdog for Survivor Series to a lot of people. So how do you overcome a more vicious big dog Roman Reigns? And then do you kind of keep your head on a swivel knowing that The Miz has that money in the bank contract ready to cash it in at any time? Oh, well, I hope. I really, really hope Roman underestimates me. You know, if he's the head of the table, the big dog, he better get ready for the big cat here. I'm a lot more wily and cunning than I used to be hey, last time we faced each other. Um, the last time Roman Reigns and I, I had faced, you know, he was top of the company. He has been the number one guy for years and years and years. And I was still finding myself, still fighting, like evolving to my full potential. <clears throat> and it was over WrestleMania season. You know, when Roman took a little hiatus, I finally became, you know, the Drew McIntyre you know today. And he said on SmackDown last week, he wasn't watching. He's not been paying attention to the show. He doesn't know what I'm all about now. And that's on him because he's going to get a shock come Survivor Series. So Paul Heyman is right there with them. If, you know, Paul will be able to fill him in. You might want to watch out for this guy, because he's the same guy that like, hum- like humbled Brock Lesnar reading up to WrestleMania, then defeated him in five minutes. You remember the Brock Lesnar that bust your head open at WrestleMania a few years ago, Roman? That guy, yeah, Drew destroyed him. So you <laughs> might want to take him serious. So this is going to be a huge fight. It's the two top champions. It's the biggest match possible in WWE, and it's two modern-day warriors. I know what Roman's capable of in the ring, and he's going to find out what I'm capable of these days. Man, and it's it's going to be one hell of a match come Sunday night at Survivor Series. Now, do you do you kind of go in, no, like, you've got the big match with Roman, but do you keep your head on a swivel thinking, could The Miz cash in his contract oh, for his Money Miz. in the Bank contract? You mentioned him already. I keep forgetting about The Miz. I'm always forgetting about The Miz. Everyone's always forgetting about The Miz. But that's going to work to his advantage because when we're not thinking about them is he could potentially show up when you least expect it. So I did warn him on Raw on Monday and himself and John Morrison. You know, if you not learned your lesson, I've spent three weeks beating you both to pieces. I actually faced both of them at the same time and defeated them. But to be fair, they keep coming back and talking trash. So they can take a beating and they keep coming. But yeah, if he tries to cash in, I don't even know how to describe the level of physicality that I'll inflict on him. It will be very nasty, and it will not stop, and it will continue because Raw is 52 weeks a year. No reruns, no off-season. I'll beat his arse every single week if I have to. So, so Miz, if you're listening, just don't even try to cash your money in the bank contract in on Drew McIntyre because it's not uh, going to be good for yeah. you. You've got Miz, like, I'll promote your show, Miz. The Miz and Mrs. out there, you've got your lovely family. Think about them. Trust me, you don't want to go there. Enjoy your family. Don't come near Drew McIntyre because I'll mess you up, man. Oh, man. Those are some strong words from Drew McIntyre. Uh, Survivor Series is going down on the WWE Network this Sunday. And, you know, it seems like the WWE Universe is wanting to see you and Sheamus go at it for the title. And we kind of saw a little bit of that this past Monday. Is that something you want to happen after you defeat Roman on Sunday? Because I'm going to throw that out in the universe that you're going to defeat Roman. So, Well, thank you. Uh, for one, and uh, two, no, I don't want to face Seamus. You ever been hit by Seamus before? No, have you ever heard people talk about being hit by Seamus? It freaking hurts. <laughs> it, <laughs> people say the same thing about me. So like that would be quite the battle for the WWE Universe to watch, but um, I think it's an interesting dynamic on the show because technically Seamus is a bad guy. I'm doing air quotations and I'm a good guy. It's not quite the same as it used to be. There's shades of gray these days. But you see us interacting with each other and you see that real friendship because we are really friends. Uh, we haven't known each other for a very long time. He was the best man at my wedding. We've you know, grown up together. 
um, in America and in WWE, even though he's way older than me with a bigger brother. Way older. As I always like to point out to him. Um, so it was fun having that dynamic on the show and showing that real relationship. And I think it'd be cool if we actually did some stuff together for a little while um, before any big matches. If you want the match, you can have the match, I guess. But I think it'd be interesting to see us do some stuff together, but not changing our roles, still being the same people, still being the same characters. He's got his way he does things that people like or don't like. I've got my way of doing things people like or don't like, but together, they're very interesting dynamic as a team because there is that real friendship. Right, and there's so much history, and we've actually had Seamus sitting here in the studio with us before. So once once kind of pandemic ends and you get back to Nashville, definitely have you in the studio. But I do want to throw this out because WWE has been phenomenal at cinematic matches. Can we get like a Seamus Drew McIntyre Drew McIntyre Highlander match kind of cinematic version? Yeah, maybe some kind of Celtic chaos match. Maybe yes. we can base it in Nashville because you know technically Seamus lives there. He's the Nashville Warrior. Um, so maybe we can we can arrange it in your local town and we can come and hang out in the studio together and promote it once things get back to normal. Yeah, that, I'm I'm all down for that. So anytime next time you're in Nashville, you know, after pandemic's done, studio doors wide open and Drew Sunday night Survivor Series, that hand's getting raised. You're gonna beat Roman. Well, I'm feeling good about it. I appreciate it, buddy. I'm excited for that match. I'm excited for the Undertaker's 30th anniversary, a huge celebration for the Undertaker that night. So. It's going to be a really cool show overall for the WWE Universe and a huge match for myself against Roman Reigns. And the humble, the head of the table. Humble, the head of the table. Drew, I appreciate you taking the time out and talking with us today. Survivor Series Sunday night on the WWE Network. Definitely go and stream it live. And if you don't have the WWE Network, it's nine ninety nine a month. Go grab that as well. But, Drew, looking forward to Sunday night. Good luck on the match, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Awesome, bud. Appreciate you. I'll speak to you soon.